Bitina Ortez E. Minya was not accustomed to waiting. A former Miss Venezuela and Miss Universe runner-up, of course, the exceedingly brown strawberry blonde was this day's the wife of Miami Auto Parts tycoon Herman Ortez E. Minya. And at every restaurant she chose to grace with her presence, she was always greeted with reverence and whisk to the exact table she desired. Today, she wanted the corner table on the terrace at Sip Sip, her favorite lunch spot on Harbor Island. She wanted to sit on one of the comfy orange canvas director's chair and stare out at the gently lapping turquoise waters while eating her kale scissor salad. But there was a large noisy group taking up the entire terrace and they didn't seem in much hurry to leave. Bettina fumed as she glared at the tourists happily savoring their lunch in the sun. Look how tatty they were. The woman overly tanned, wrinkled, and saggy. None of them properly lifted or buttocks. She felt like walking up to their table and handing out her dermatologist business cards. And the men were even worse. All dressed in a rumpled shirts and shorts, wearing those cheap straw hats sold at the trinket shop on Dunmore Street. Why did such people have to come here? The three and a half mile long paradise with its pristine pink sand beaches was one of the best kept secrets in the Caribbean. A haven for the very rich filled with quaint little wood houses painted in the shades of sherbet. Charmin boutiques, cheap oceanfront mansions turned into inns, and five-star restaurants to rival St. Bart's. Tourists should have to take a style exam before being allowed to set foot on the island. Feeling that she had been patient long enough, Bettina stormed into the kitchen, the fringe on her crocheted kuchi kaftan top shaking furiously as she made a beeline for the woman with a shock of pixie cut blonde hair manning the main stove. Julie, honey, what's the deal? I've waited more than 15 minutes for my table. Bettina sighed to the owner of the restaurant. Sorry, Bettina, it's been one of those days. The party of 12 on the terrace showed up first just before you did. Julie replied as she handed off a bowl of spicy conch chili to waiting server. But the terrace is your prime spot. Why on earth did you let those tourists take up all that space? Well, the tourist in the red fishing cap is the Duke of Glencora, his party just boated over from Windermere. That's his royal his man, you see moored off the coast. Isn't it the most handsome sailboat you've ever seen? I'm not impressed by big boats. Bettina huffed, although secretly she was rather impressed by people with a big title. From the kitchen window, she surveyed the party assembled on the terrace with new eyes. These Aristo British types were such a strange breed. Sure, they had their Savile Row suits and their hair long tiaras, but when they traveled, they looked so painfully frumpy. It was only then that Bettina noticed three tan, well built men in fitted white t shirts and black Kevlar pants sitting at the adjacent table. The guys weren't eating but sat watchfully, sipping glasses of seltzer water. I assume that's the Duke's security detail. They couldn't be more obvious. Don't they know that we're all billionaires here in Bryland? And this isn't how we rule? Bettina touted. Actually, those bodyguards belong to the Duke's special guest. They did a whole sweep of the restaurant before the party arrived. They even searched my walk-in freezer. See that Chinese fellow seated at the end of the table? Bettina squinted through her Dior Extas sunglasses at the portly, bubbling, 70-something Asian man dressed in a nondescript white short sleeve golf shirt and gray trousers. Oh, I didn't even notice him. Am I supposed to know who he is? That's Alfred Shang, Julie said in a hushed tone. Bettina giggled. He looks like their chauffeur. Doesn't he look like that guy that used to drive Jane Wayman around in Falcon Crest? Julie, who was trying to focus on searing a cut of tuna to perfection, shook her head a tight-lipped smile. From what I hear, 
The chauffeur is the most powerful man in Asia. What's his name again?